Golf is a beautiful thing to watch. It's timing and rhythm. If you get it all together, brother, you can play some golf. All right, we're back on the course playing the front nine. And let me tell you, it was windy that day. We couldn't hit a ball straight to save our lives because it got pushed around in the air so much. So we don't do any warm-ups or hit any practice balls on the range before we start. Just a few twists to loosen the spine and a few practice swings and we're off to the races. I'm starting off with a 7 iron and hit a fine shot. A bit more to the right of the fairway than I'd like, but I can work with that. My dad is teeing off with a 5 wood. It's a great shot, but the wind just pushes it to the right. I'm setting up with my pitching wedge here and want to make an easy 9 o'clock swing, but I catch it terribly. I'm lucky I didn't outright blade this one over the green. My dad is chipping with a 7 iron, barely gets any air on it, but the result is great. Yeah, it gets the nod of approval. I leave myself this long putt for birdie. On to hole number two, a 161 yard par three. Well, that was unfortunate. I have no idea how he does that. A full swing with the might of a bear and the ball just pops up into the air a few feet. So I'm grabbing my five iron for this distance. But I push it out to the right and leave myself this long putt. which I leave short. This is a six foot putt at least. I think even tour pros only average 50% of putts hold from this distance. Can we make it? Ah, uh, no chance, we'll leave it short. All right, hole three, par four. Nice drive, but he hits it into the hills on the left. I'm doing my practice swings here, trying to get a feel for the rhythm, but man, this wind is strong. So I pick some grass, but when I release it, it whips out of my hand so quickly I can't even see where it went. I had to turn the audio way down to make it bearable, else you'd only hear the wind rumbling in the microphone. And I also put it into the hills on the left. Tough shot from a sloping lie in the rough, leaves it a bit short of the green. So the flag is at the end on the very right side of the green with two bunkers between us. There's no point in getting cute, so I try to play the ball left of the pin, leaving me with two putts. My dad is chipping with his 7 iron again. I don't think he catches it very well, but the result is fantastic. And this ball is just hippity hopping like on a pogo stick. You can't really plan for how many bumps you'll hit, so you've just gotta hope for the best. Yeah, this doesn't happen often, but regularly. He has these shots where he'll get no air on the ball at all. Maybe because he's topping them? It doesn't sound like it, so I don't really know. I remember this shot because it felt fantastic off the face. 
It felt like the ball was glued to the club for a whole second or even longer. I could feel in my fingers the golf ball compressing against the driver head. That was great. Pushes this one out to the right. Now, I have a 3 wood, which I don't feel comfortable striking off the turf. I'm trying to make an easy swing, but I pull this one way left, and I put myself in this position. There's a tree blocking my swing, the overhanging branches don't let me take a high lofted club, and there's almost no rollout on the green. I have my sandwich out, but I'm sure I'd hit the branches, so I put it away and I see what I can do with my pitching wedge instead. I think I might be able to bump it up. So bump it into the rough and hope it takes enough speed out of the ball. Just letting it trickle onto the green. But I make poor contact and I can't even put enough speed on it to clear the rough. Alright, shot number four, chipping with a pitching wedge. Yeah, solid effort, but I don't even finish this hole. I get close enough, but it probably would have been two putts, so I just give myself a double bogey. I think I hit a big slice here. Yeah, I can't even hold my finish. I'm falling backwards out of the swing, but it should still be in the fairway. Alright, we're looking to put this one onto the green with a pitching wedge. I make great contact, but the ball just slides out to the right. I don't think I can even blame the wind for that one. Ah, watch what happens here. So, I'm looking into the sky after the putt, because the very moment I switch into my through swing, a huge gust of wind blasts into my face, even knocking me back a bit, but I can't stop the putt in time. The green doesn't even break this hard, that's the wind pushing the ball off course. And the putt rolls over the edge, and that's a 3 putt for bogey. Hole number 6, par 4. Great drive. I'm standing over this ball, thinking to myself, hit it easy, relaxed, smooth. Works like a charm, but I'm noticing that when I do relax, I tend to almost hook the ball. Happens fairly often, and I wonder why that is. So I'm barely off the fairway in the rough, with pitching wedge in hand. I'm looking to shoot straight for the pin, and again I make fantastic contact, but pull the ball to the left. Alright, we're both on the green, putting for a birdie. And I hit this putt way too hard. That's not even a safe tap-in anymore. But, as luck would have it, we save the par. Yeah, and I'm laughing. I am delighted with that one. My dad is teeing off with a 9 wood. Not a club you would commonly see. But that was probably my dad's best shot of the whole round. It had a very satisfying ping at impact, great to listen to. Usually I'd hit a 5 iron for this distance, but the tee box is so far forward that I grab a 7 iron instead. Now this shot I remember. I really, really wanted to make this shot. I wanted to get this one on the green. We're about 140, 150 yards out from the pin. 
In this situation, I tend to get a bit tense and fade the ball because I tighten up my right wrist through impact. But I'm thinking, loosen your wrists and swing easy. And it works out a treat. Maybe even too good. Because I think I left myself a super long putt again. Unfortunate. Pulled it left and straight into the bunker. But he manages to dig it out just fine. Very nice. Yeah, that's what I thought. Left myself a massive putt again. And like last time, this ball is jumping across the green like a grasshopper. I'm throwing my hands in the air because the bumps are taking so much distance off the putt. But to be fair, spring just started and the green keepers are still sorting out the greens. In late spring and summer, the greens are much smoother. He's liking that one. Managed to save par. Awesome. All right, hole number eight, an almost 200 yard par three. Solid shot. Didn't make it to the green, but left himself a chance for an up and down. Now, I have a three wood in hand, but this hole is way too short for that. But the next longest club I have in the bag is a five iron, and I can't make the green with that. So I just want to hit this wood as soft as I can. But I end up in a sand trap. The ball isn't plugged or anything. It's comfortably sitting on top of the sand. I want to clip the ball out. And I'm thinking of this old video of Bobby Jones and the 1920s or 30s where he clips three balls out of the bunker in a row. Now here, I use a mashing nibbling because I have a clean lie on the sand, the back of the bunker is quite low, and the hole is far back. He's using a 9 iron here, and one after the other he just effortlessly pops them out of the bunker with what is essentially a frying pan or a garden hoe. I'm looking to put the ball back in my stance a bit so I don't take much sand. I make great contact, but I think I just barely caught it on the hosel. The ball gets out clean as can be, but shoots out diagonally to the left. So I leave myself the 6 foot plus putt again and can't make it. And I almost didn't even make that happen. My putting is whack today. On all the other days too, but on this day in particular. My dad hits a nice drive on the right side of the fairway. That should give him a pretty clear shot at the pin. So, I hit this one a good distance, but push it so far to the right that I put it in front of this massive oak tree. I want to just lay it up with a pitching wedge, but completely duff the shot. It even goes in and bounces out of the bunker. But as Lady Luck would have it, we still end up in the middle of the fairway. I've got a 7 iron in hand, and I want to lay this ball right next to the pin. I have a tendency to fade the ball, but I think the wind is aiding and pushing the ball even further to the right. And, wouldn't you know it, I leave myself a long putt again. I get close, but even that doesn't look like a guaranteed knock-in. Ooh, my dad hit the pin, very nice. but. I guess it's good that the flag caught the ball. Ah dear, do I even make this? Alright, very nice. At least we save a bogey. So we finished 9 holes at this point, but decide we could play a few more. We're at hole 10 and my dad pounds a great wood down the fairway. 
Oh, now this was scary. Watch what happens. This woman, who's a regular at a course, suddenly walks up from behind the trees. I'm not looking at her, and she's not looking at me, and I'd already initiated my backswing. But my dad catches her and calls stop, stop to me. One second later and I would have blasted this ball down the fairway. So after a few practice swings to calm down, I hit a nice and easy shot down the fairway. We've got an 8 iron here and I hit this ball way too hard. And as it's in the air, I'm thinking it's gotta be over the green. But the wind pushes it back so much it finds its way back onto the green. But we get close enough for a safe tap in. I've really gotta get it closer to the hole with my approach shots. This is something Gary Player said, which is golf is played within 100 yards. Because golf is played from 100 yards in. Bunker shots, chipping and putting. That's how you lower your handicap. So we skipped around a bit and now we're on hole 18. Nice drive. Curves a bit to the right, but safe and on the fairway. Ah, this one bummed me out. I would have loved to see this drive on camera. I'm out of frame to the left and hit a drive which was the equivalent of the hammer of Zeus pounding the anvil of the gods. That drive was cash money. Probably around 280 or 290 yards. Yeah. It looks like he's catching the ball on the hosel, which just pulls it way left. And the next one is struck on the toe and just shoots out to the right. I think he covered a whole spectrum of 90 degrees with those two shots alone. Pulled again. But if he could straighten that out, that ball would fly a mile. So, I've got about 260 yards to the green, so I'm setting up with a 5 iron, but I catch it thin. I'm actually surprised at how much air it still gets, but the contact was just wrong. The pin is so far to the right of the green that you can't even see it. So I'm thinking to myself, I'll just gently lay the ball onto the left side of the green with an 8 iron. Two putts and Bob's your uncle. Now, this was funny. We're both walking towards the ball left of the pin because we think it's ours. But my dad says, nah, it's his. So I'm thinking, oh man, then where the hell is my ball? I don't see anything else on the green. So I'm looking for it, I'm walking around, going all the way to the back. I'm searching for it and I find it. It is all the way in the back. That ball was like 30 yards from the hole. I don't even think our practice green is this long. So I hit this ball hard, but the green is sticky as glue. I don't think I could even hit that much harder with my putter, and I'm not even close to the pin. I'm trying to save par on this massive putt, but uh, I get close but can't make it. So we end the round with a bogey. Well, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.